the Jesuits Vocations Promotions Team. 426-6101, Local 3406. Once again, 426-6101, Local 3406. Radio Katipunan, 87.9 FM. Taranad simulan ang inyong umaga sa mga magagandang refleksyon tungkol sa ating buhay at pananampalataya. Kasama sina Father J. Boy Gonzalez at Father Nono Alfonso ng Kapisanan ni Jesus, binibining Risa Singson Kaupeng ng Feast Magazine, Father Fiel Pareha mula sa Archdiocese ng San Fernando, Pampanga, at Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle. Dito sa Kapet Pandasal sa Radyo Katipunan 87.9. Radyo Katipunan News, Insights, Inspiration Radyo Katipunan Down from the hill and down to the world Radyo Katipunan The voice of the Blue Eagle Radyo 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 Radyo, 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 Radyo Katipunan Sa loob, sa labas ng skwela Ating ibibida Lahat ng kwela Radyo, radyo, radyo Katipuna Radyo, radyo, radyo Katipuna Radyo, katipuna Radyo, radyo, katipuna Ikaw ang ni Ignacio Katipunero sugol Todo sa kayot Tulong at tulong out the latest happenings in, around, and beyond Katipuna. This is the Katipuna Roundup. Radyo Katipunan 87.9 FM, the voice of the Blue Eagle. Hello everyone, once again, I have risen like from the ashes, I don't know anything. Anyways, hold on, We're gonna, you're gonna see me in a bit, and when you do, please don't be surprised. Alright, ready? 3, 2, 1... Hello. Oh, no, not yet. Three, two, one. Hello. There we go. Yep, can see me, can see my face. For those of you watching right now on Facebook and uh, YouTube, unfortunately. So, hello to all of our listeners right now on 87.9 FM and at Zeno.fm slash RK879, as well as on the Zeno Radio app, as well as those of you watching us right now on Facebook and YouTube, and those of you following us on Instagram and X. No, it still doesn't seem right. We're never gonna, we, we might never fix that. Anyway, welcome to the Katipunan Roundup where we look at the ins, outs, and all abouts of the place we call home, Katipunan Avenue. I'm Teo Forte, your host. And for today, we're not gonna be doing so much of a, a roundup of what's gonna be happening because, uh, well, I think two things we know are happening. One, it's cheer rally later. And two, traffic is everywhere. 
do you need to know more about what's going on? Not really. Uh, but there is a third thing that I think is very important to discuss, and that's what we're going to be discussing today, is that tomorrow is World Rabies Day. Something you may not have known. Um, first off, I just want to get through some uh, birthday greetings, uh, some celebrity birthdays, and then want to greet one of our own. So first, Google turns 25 today. Uh, Steve Kerr turns 48. Lil Wayne, Little Wayne, Lil Wayne turns 41. Avril Lavigne turning 39 today. Jenna Ortega turns 21 today. Robbie Domingo, one of our own, turns 34. And from Jesscom, happy, happy birthday to Ate Edna Beltran. Happy birthday, Ate Edna. All right. So let's get to what we're going to be talking about today. So, of course, tomorrow is World Rabies Day, September 28th, which is also coincidentally the uh, death anniversary of Louis Pasteur, who also uh, devised the rabies vaccine. So rabies is, uh, according to the CDC, the world's deadliest infectious disease with over 60,000 dead per year. Now, we're going to be talking about that. And uh, if I can just uh, have them. There we go. There's our guests for, uh, for today. Let's say hello to the camera. So we have with us for today... There we go. We have with us for today uh, Tobiel Guse, the president of Aguila, and Dr. Noe Inson of CIF Central Corporation. So they're going to be talking about uh, uh, World Rabies Day and uh, just discussing uh, about rabies today. But uh, before we get to that, uh, I actually want to um, ask uh, a few things first. And I'll, I'll start with uh, you, Toby. Um, so you're the president of Aguila. So for those people that don't know, what does Aguila stand for and uh, what is it basically? All right. Uh, Aguila basically is a Lions organization. So it's a student led organization in Ateneo. And um, what Aguila stands for is Ateneans guided and inspired by our love for animals. And what we do is advocate for animal welfare. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, yeah, and so how do you guys how are you guys able to do that? Like what projects do you guys have usually, Sir Aguila? Well, Aguila is a really old org at this point. So 10, ten year history and um we've conducted a lot of projects including well one um Animal Welfare Week. So there's Aguila Week which uh aims to provide um fundraising for uh animal shelters or um different um, animal owners and there's also some awareness campaigns that we have we also do a lot of operations here in Ateneo so we do cat census where we go around Ateneo counting the campus cats making sure that they're all vaccinated they're all um, spayed and neutered and they're all happily living their lives here mm -hmm. yeah I think it's an important thing also about the it's not just about uh, counting the, the cats it's also about pretty much like pretty much how their health is also, exactly. which I think is important, so that's very good. Um, and then, uh, Doc Noe, you're a part of CIF Central Corp, so tell us about what the uh, CIF is. Oh, yes. Um, uh, CIF Central Corp is is a healthcare company, okay? So, uh, right now, we cater to a lot of services, uh, like mainly um, medical services, um, vaccinations, as well as um, our one of our current services right now is animal bite management. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I see. Animal bite management, and that is exactly what we're going to be talking about yeah. today. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, um, you know, we'll we'll also delve into sort of the other services that CIF has to offer. But yeah. uh, so we are going to be dis discussing uh, World Rabies Day. Mm -hmm. uh, but first off, because I think one of the things about rabies is I think um, it is something that we're so used to being vaccinated for. Mm -hmm. It's like it's already like one of the essentials of the like, oh, rabies. Uh, vaccine, polio vaccine. Yeah, so like it, you know, you don't really think about it much. But uh, let's take this time to like clarify what it is. So tell us what is rabies, and how do you get it? Okay, so just to make it brief. Okay, so rabies is a type of um, infection. Okay, so it mainly attacks our nervous system, um, causing some complications such as some seizures. Um, some people uh, get um, phobias for uh, water or air. So th those are the late stages complication. And we usually get rabies when, uh, well, us humans, we get rabies when we um, get bitten or get scratched by an animal infected with rabies, okay? Mm -hmm. Or 
um, if an animal like licks an open wound on a human being. Okay, so basically any like any way for the pathogens to get into the body through pretty much either they make the incision or there's already an incision on the body and like they just enough yeah, it finds its way I, I, in. Exactly. Now, one thing that I did find out uh, while I was searching up about rabies is that there are two types apparently. Uh, or at least like how how the body reacts to it. Cuz like what people think of when we think of rabies is that usually it's the and the sort of the this is is the word hysteria? Uh, the, the foaming of uh, the mouth, and then there, oh, there's yeah, that. Yeah. But then there's also the other type where it's like you can get paralyzed. Oh, something? yeah, yeah. Uh, just to delve into that. So, yes, you're right. Uh, we have like two types. So, we have the furious type. So, that's what we imagine when we see people like somehow doing some bending or like they some of them have some drooling over the mouth. And we have also the paralytic type. So, these are the types that we don't usually suspect rabies at first since the first thing that they manifest with would be some, um, they're, they're, they are unable to move some part of their limbs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think, yeah, it's important to note that because yeah. like we're so used to seeing when it's portrayed the first type that we don't often think about the second yeah. type. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, if ever, let's say like, yung, um, you get bitten, you get scratched or they do like an open wound. So what can they do? about that or like how do you like take care of it before it gets worse i see okay um well um what is important is that so once you get bitten by or scratched by an animal uh that you suspect or not suspect for having rabies so the first thing you need to do is well you, you have to wash the wound so when washing uh you you uh, we usually advise them to use um running water and um soap and you do that for 15 minutes so that's one and the second step is um, to make sure that you go to the nearest um, animal bite clinic so that the wound uh, will be um, like uh, examined by a qualified healthcare professional. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, okay. It's good to mention in the 15 minutes because I think when people say, na, oh, just wash the wound. Oh, okay. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Okay, all better. But like, uh, no, so really you have to keep it there the whole time yes exactly and then even once you're done like having it under the running water you still have to rush it's a good thing that <laughs> the cif is present because uh, for those people that don't know where is cif oh yeah uh well cif uh, we just like we're we've been here in um Loyola heights for around two years now so we're located along esteban abada um if you know where 7-eleven is we're right beside the 7-eleven so just in case you have some animal bite um, problems or any concerns, perhaps, um, you can visit us there, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So for those of you guys that don't know, yun nga, uh, along the intersection of, I believe it was Rosa Alvera Rosa and Alvera. Uh, Esteban Abada. Because yeah. I never know the name of that, the uh, Rosa Alvera. Like, I mean, like I know it now, but like it's always been ano, to me. The one with the McDonald's. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then, yeah, and then, yeah, just there. Uh, and then that 7-Eleven just near to the Chubby Chicken. So yeah. Yeah. there's that. Go to Chubby Chicken. You eat. Yeah. Oh, no, I got bitten. At least, at least you have a place to run to. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Um, okay, so now that we, uh, we've discussed, like, you know, what you have to do. So it's running water plus soap and 15 minutes. And then you have to rush to the ABC to get your uh, wound checked. Yes. Now... I, I want to discuss then about sort of the uh, the possibility of it happening here around uh, no, mm -hmm. Ateneo, especially around campus, because yeah. we mm -hmm. do have a lot of cats. Mm -hmm. uh, so shout out to the Catanians, uh, as as they are referred to here. But um, uh, I hope I don't offend anyone by asking this, because you know there is much love for the cat the the cats of Ateneo. But uh, are the cats safe? Interesting question there, Tio. Um, are the cats safe? Um, from an animal welfare perspective, um, no, because animals are animals. They are unpredictable. Um, even if you know the cat for a very long time, you don't know when they might lash out because they're having a bad day. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're um, new to the campus. So uh, that cat you see in sec area is um, a new cat which doesn't have any prior um, experience or in uh, contact with people and you try touching it and it reacts badly. Um, personally, I do not recommend at all trying to feed the cats 
pet the cats. Um, mm -hmm. I think this is a well-known saying both in Aguila and amongst the student body. Um, Pre-pandemic, 70% of the cats were um, neutered, spayed, and vaccinated, especially in high-traffic areas. Mm -hmm. um, we also have programs to which uh, we uh, try to um, limit the cats to more secluded areas so that students don't get scratched or bitten, um, which is the case more, more recently. Mm -hmm. um, so, simple answer, uh, no, they're not safe. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do touch them, that's on you. <laughs> I see. Whoa, 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 you put the blame on <laughs> Well, I mean, to be fair, I mean, yeah, kind of, because like, yeah. at least now, you know, Toby let us know now that like, uh, you just have to be careful around them. It's, it's nice to, I guess, admire them. Uh, it's exactly. nice to, it's nice to. They're nice to see. They're nice to take pictures of. Yeah. But when it comes to uh, touching them or petting them, you know, just um, at your own risk. But exactly. uh, it is very much not recommended to do that. Which is crazy because like we see it happen a lot around campus. Yeah. Right. yeah. And like it's one of those things that like is so embedded I think into the into the culture. The culture. Yeah. That yeah. It's like <laughs> like oh it can't be that bad. Like they're oh they're so cute. Like just pet them. But then, you know, we forget that once again another instance of like rabies, I guess, being yeah. taken for granted because we're vaccinated against it. Like or at least I hope people are. But uh yeah. So so 70%, no? Um, and this is recent data, or is this... 2019. So, for the past three years, like, we're not yet sure. We're not sure, oh. because a lot of cats were moving or migrating in and outside of Ateneo. And um, with the recent um, kitten or litters that are popping up in, let's say, CTC, LST, um, where else do we find? We also find in Gons. Um, around Sequoak. Yeah, around oh, Sequoak, Sequoak, exactly. Yeah. Um, so these are high traffic areas where people usually go through and there is uh, an exponential growth of cats in Ateneo. There's cats in Fora, there's mm -hmm. cats in Arete, there's cats everywhere from grade school to the high school to the back of LST. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that, that is one thing that people notice is that, you know, they, they tend to be everywhere. But I think the one thing that surprised me was when you mentioned that there was one in the Gons cafeteria. Exactly. <laughs> Which yeah. is weird to me because like I I mean like yeah an open space is Zen Garden, yeah. sure, but like inside? <laughs> inside. <laughs> went in? Exactly, inside. Um there are so many cases where uh, I see cats going through under the tables, um rubbing themselves on the students. And um there are cases uh on the uh Gons foyer where mm -hmm. cats sit on the tables and steal the food of students. So like why do you feed them? <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Goodbye, money. I actually, I was about to say like, oh my God, how did they get sent here? And then I just realized, oh yeah, people do feed the, mm -hmm. the cats. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen it in like happen like in person, but like I do hear about like cats being fed. Yeah. And so just a shop, just a reminder to all the Athenians. Remember, guys, the cats are cute, and they they look lovely, but. Uh, don't uh, stay away. Just stay away from them for and uh, just admire them from afar. Like yeah. it's not wrong to like admire them from afar. Yeah. Uh now oh before we continue, I just wanna like shout out a few people first. Uh that we have people in the comments section. So yes, hello to those of you there. Uh shout out to Anthony Perez who's watching right now. Hello, we are Anthony. Uh Yun. We hope to see you back here in RK soon. Ooh. And then um, also, uh, someone shouting out for uh, Doc Noe. Wait, lang, hold on. Let me just uh, bring it up. Yeah. Um, yeah. By the way, guys, uh, if you're wondering why the, the camera switching tends to be uh, quite uh, uh, slow, it's because I'm also the one doing it right now. So I'm kind of on double duty right now. Anyway, so uh, ano, someone's uh, greeting C. Ralor Chocs Flechero. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, proud of you, medical head director, Doc Noe. Oh, wow. Fan in the chat. Uh, and then, uh, shout out to Toby from Josh Solis. Wow, Josh. <laughs> That's so cool. So, yeah, thank you guys for uh, tuning in right now. You're still on the Katipunan Roundup here on the Vajra Katipunan 87.9 FM. Now, um, rabies prevention. So we've talked about yeah. too much times rabies. We've talked about like uh, what um, 
yun nga, one of the parts of avoiding it is just avoid the cats, especially in Ateneo, because like, yun nga, we know that it's only 70% who have been vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And even then, that's an old statistic. We don't know what the new numbers are. Mm -hmm. But um, for people who just, you know, who also aren't in Ateneo, like, how can we, I don't know, how can we avoid rabies? How can we prevent? Okay. Uh, that's a very good question. So, um, I think uh, one of the things that being done by Aguila is actually... Um, spreading awareness yes. uh, about not touching the cat so that's one thing um another thing is that uh, going into like uh, a broader perspective on how we can prevent rabies especially in our communities is well if you have pets okay um one of the uh things that we need to do as responsible pet owners is to have our pets vaccinated yeah okay that's one um second is um just in case you get bitten or um get scratched uh, it is very important to you that you go to an animal bite clinic, okay? Um, since um, at the clinic, um, the doctors or the team of health professionals are going to examine the wound and identify if a rabies vaccine is needed for that type of wound. So those are two things. Vaccinate your pets and get vaccinated as a human being as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's I very I'd love to add there. Yeah. Um, on an animal welfare perspective, or a policy perspective, one of the main pushes that we have as an organization is the TNVR or the Trap, Neuter, Vaccinate and mm -hmm. Return program, which um, for one, it limits the amount of um, more cats and dogs that are roaming around our streets here in Ateneo, outside in the Loyola Heights and uh, around the country, TNVR um, then vaccinate. So that's one way to efficiently and sustainably eliminate um, the uh, cases of rabies because um, you not only reduce the amount of animals, you reduce the amount of animals that can get mm. rabies back. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. So, I know. You know, vaccinate the pets and vaccinate yourself. And I think we've understood the importance of vaccines because of some event that happened three years ago and whose effects we're still <laughs> experiencing now. And I think it's also good then that the, uh, you know, the sort of the... Uh, the TNVR initiative mm -hmm. that you guys yeah. are doing. Um, you know, sorry, it just reminded me of something we were talking about a while ago before the show started, which was like, young Anna, young how the sort of a lot of the legislation regarding rabies is just towards dogs. Exactly. Which is weird, right? Because it's like, you know, cats, as we know now, cats also carry rabies, but yeah. like, you know, uh, it's very weird na ano nga eh. Like, they just put the focus on dogs. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright. So, yun nga, you guys mentioned nga, uh, your pet can get va get your pet vaccinated, but also vaccinate your pet. Uh, but also vaccinate yourself. I said the same thing twice. Can you tell? <laughs> uh, anyway. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, where can people get vaccinated? Especially around, uh, especially around Katipunan. Oh yeah. So with regards to that, so um, one of the things that we realized here in Loyola Heights is that um, some people like go to our clinic previously, uh, looking for if we have some uh, rabies vaccines, and we saw that there's a need for it. Since I think the nearest um, animal bite clinic or animal bite treatment center here is in Marikina or somewhere in Cubao, so that's the reason why we established the animal bite clinic here in um, along Esteban Abada to cater for those. Um, Athenians and actually the Loyola Heights community to yeah. avail of the rabies vaccines. Yeah, yeah, that's good because like, if I remember correctly, yung nga, so as you mentioned, nearest animal bite clinic is yeah. in like either Marikina or Cubao. Yeah. Tapos yung nearest hospital mm -hmm. ba is where? Like, Quirino. Yeah. Yung, yeah. oh yun, Quirino. Because I was thinking of, ano yung City World yung sa, was it? Anona? World City. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah. World City, there yeah. we go. Yeah, and I've only passed by it a few times, so like I can't remember the full name. But yeah, uh, World City, no. And it's like, if you do experience an issue, like, imagine how far you'd have to go, pa, de ba? Kung wala yung CIF, so yeah. buti na lang you guys are there, just near there. Yeah. By chubby chicken also, so after the vaccine, <laughs> pati ka rin kumain. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> Man, um. But apart from uh, rabies vaccines, what other services does CIF offer? Oh yes, um, apart from animal bite management, uh, we also cater to all types of um, cases, medical cases, like um, uh, if you have if you have a stomach ache or a fever, then you can come to the clinic so that uh, we can treat you accordingly. And apart from that, other um, vaccines like flu vaccines, pneumonia, which are very important, especially that people these days have mm -hmm. gotten sick. 
I think, because of the changes in the weather. So I, I'm not sure. But just in case, uh, when in doubt, you can go to the clinic and uh, ask us about anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, no, because like, I'm uh, sorry. It's like you, you did mention that like people are getting sick. I was like, yeah, I did mm. notice that. Changes in the... Probably, yeah. <laughs> but like one thing's for sure, you are... <laughs> yeah, people are getting sick. Uh, our, our station manager got sick. By the way, Sir Justin, get well soon. <laughs> I'm running the mothership right now while you're gone. But yeah, anyway. Yeah, and, all right, so... Yeah, before we before we go, before we end, uh, may I ask, uh, yeah, where can people find uh, first off, where can people find Aguila, and then where, where can people find CIF? Yeah. Well, Aguila, um, uh, Aguila is an organization of students, so you can ask anyone from the guards or from the students or anyone mm-hmm. in Ateneo, they most likely know what Aguila is. Um, but we also have a Facebook page. So Aguila Facebook page, you can go there, you can message us there. Um, mm-hmm. We'll respond as soon as we can. Mm-hmm. Um, for other concerns around the community, for uh, animal related, you can go to BOSS. BOSS is just there. Um, just by grade school, uh, really close. Um, you can have your uh, pets spayed, neutered, and vaccinated there at a really low cost price. So yeah. And then CIF. As for CIF, um, once again, we're located along Esteban Abada, uh, right beside 7 Eleven. Uh, you can contact us either through Facebook, CIF Central Corp, or through Instagram, still CIF Central Corp. Yeah. Okay, nice. Thank you, thank you guys so much. Um, all right, so a few other things here. Their clinic hours are Mondays to Fridays, 8 a.m. to mm-hmm. 5 p.m., and yeah. then on Saturday, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. That's right. Um, if you guys would like to contact them via phone, you may do so at 0969-119-7955. Once again, that's 0969-119-7955 or at 0995-302-2232. Once again, that's 0995-302-2232. You can also c- see them at cifcentralcorp.com or you can send them an email at customerservice at cifcentralcorp.com. So... Uh, Toby, Doc Noe, thank you guys so much thank for so much. coming over thank to you. the Roundup yeah. and for enlightening us on not just uh, uh, rabies but also like you know um, dispelling some of the sort of the uh, I guess the preconceived notions that we have about it, but also about like the rabies situation in Ateneo. Not that there is a situation, more of like the facet about it, because yeah. mm-hmm. like it's something that I think uh, a lot of people don't really uh, know about. So it's it's a good thing that we got to touch upon it as yeah. well. So yeah, and uh, just a last reminder once again: do not touch the cats, <laughs> please, for your safety and the safety of everyone else. Do not touch the cats. Do not feed the cats. You may love the cats, but do not touch them nor feed them. All right, yeah. And so before we go, uh, just a few other things. New Wave is up next. They're at five p.m. Uh, the last part of their Pinoy playlist series. They're gonna be talking to Debonair District. Uh, and then uh, JMM Radio is also on later at 7 p.m. They're going to be having Living Hope joining us over here at the studio. Also, a uh, quick announcement as well before we go. Radio Katipunan is a proud participant of World College Radio Day 2023. Uh, World College Radio Day is happening this October 6, 2023. From uh, the, to- the 24-hour global marathon will be happening from 12 p.m. next Friday, 12 p.m. Philippine Standard Time, all the way until Saturday, 12 p.m. So 24 hours of nothing but radio from college radio stations around the world, and we are proud to be one of those stations joining in. So you'll hear more about that later on on our Facebook page, Instagram, and on X. X, the name is X, Teo. It's not... It's not Twitter, it's X. Anyway, you can catch us on Facebook, Instagram, and X, so you can uh, follow us there. And, uh, yeah, also for the DJ applicants, just a reminder to have your uh, ad reads out by Saturday, and we'll be releasing the results of those uh, accepted to the DJ Student Volunteer Program by next week. So that is it from me, from all of us here at Radio Katipunan. Thank you so much for tuning in we'll see you again when we see you but until then when you want to know what's going down check into the roundup we'll see you again soon bye right. this is
Sekatipunan Roundup. Sekatipunan Roundup.